This spring, the Samsung Galaxy line reached a key point. If we talk numbers, this is the fifth of the Galaxy series. From the Samsung Galaxy, they made a huge jump ahead. But I'm not sure to say the jump is big enough from the S4. Let's find out. I'm Stine, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S5. Snapdragon 801 2.5 GHz, 2 GB DDR3 RAM, 2800 mAh battery, 16 megapixel camera. Spec-wise, the Galaxy S5 wins every challenge hands down. Unfortunately, there is a lot more than that. As for all the Samsung devices, premium feel are two words you can't use to describe the S5. The Korean maker keeps the plastic polycarbonate way, avoiding expensive materials and CNC workings. And this has pros and cons. Of course, the device is light and can handle much more everyday usage, much more abuse. It allows the removable bag to access the 2800 mAh battery. Not a beast, but still average. On the other side, the look and the feel while holding the smartphone is not comparable to premium aluminum devices like the iPhone 5S or the HTC One. And here is your decision. Do you prefer a dual phone or a tank phone? Moving on to the software compartment, the Galaxy S5 is powered by Android 4.4.2 with TouchWiz as a skin on top. This latest release of TouchWiz has some big changes if compared to the previous one. Being Samsung, the biggest change is the settings panel. It's totally new and the icon style reminds me of MIUI a bit. But I'm not sure this new facelift can be considered as an improvement, due to the billions of icons to search through. It's very blundering, and it's almost impossible to find what you need at first glance. Generally speaking, the skin is probably the heaviest we have on the market, making the whole experience a bit on the slow side. It's not properly slow, but not even a blast. My Magazine is another new feature. Basically, it's a Samsung version of Google Now and Blink Feed. It doesn't have the utility of Google Now, but it shares the same burden of Blink Feed. It's not removable. You know, sometimes I dream of a stock Android native ROM on a device like this, with this potential. Less than half the features, but the ones you get would be faster than anything else. Samsung, of course, had to run for the pole position, so they equipped the S5 with the fingerprint scanner. Most of the time it doesn't work at all, but you can still show off with your friends. And the phone is rated IP67, so it means it can resist to dust and water. Not as much as a Sony Xperia Z2, but it's better than nothing. But to get this, you have to gain a burden. And I'm talking about the redundant cycle of warnings about the ceiling of the back cover and the bottom cap that covers the micro USB port. That's really annoying. The camera is somewhat good, better than the Note 3 in both capturing photos or 4K videos. We are still far from a Nokia Lumia quality, but we see a bright light at the end of the tunnel. Something worth mentioning is the Full HD Super AMOLED 5.1 inches display with Gorilla Glass 3 on the top. It's bright and detailed and with the deep blacks the colors really jumps out of the screen. This display is a wonder. Connectivity wise the S5 is great. LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC and remote control features. Call quality is good in and out with the noise cancelling microphones working at their best. But we can say the same about the single speaker still on the back that offers a discrete output volume but still can compare to something like the HTC One Boom Sound double front facing speakers or the Blackberry Z30 stereo back units. As fast as you can expect, as you can get from an HTC One for instance. The settings panel is one of the major changes on this version of TouchWiz. The Samsung Galaxy S5 is all about choices. If you care for a lot of features, even if you will never need to use them, or uh, a phone made in plastic, light, that can handle a lot of stress, all your daily abuse, and with a, a good average to good camera, then maybe the S5 is the phone for you. But if you care about premium feel in the hand, or sound quality, or less features, but uh, a more immediate and fluid and smooth experience, then you will probably point in another direction. The Samsung Galaxy S5 can run for the first place, but based on what I tested, I'm afraid it's not gonna win. 
and for this reason I think it's not totally Stine approved. So guys this is it, this was the Samsung Galaxy S5, thanks for watching, leave a comment in a section down below and let me know what you think about the S5 and about this review, so please don't kill me for what I said and for the fact I don't really like too much this S5 and leave a thumbs up if you can, subscribe to the channel to see more and stay tuned for the big comparison between the S5 and the HTC One M8.